This is a documentary on our trip to Kenya. And so to begin that, the Lord told us that our ministry is, um, to, is supposed to host a movement of the, in a redo of the current church model. Religion has a form of godliness. There's no power to change a heart with a spirit of religion, with denominations, and different kinds of churches. God is not about that. He's about the unity of His Holy Spirit. And there are This is a movement, and he says in this model, the fivefold ministry will be the government of the church. Those who govern will be the servants of all, and they will not lord it over the congregants as is done today. This is a movement where Jesus Christ is central, and most importantly, where the spirit of Christ is lifted high. In this movement, faith is spelled risk, and risk is spelled action. People will either be members of the universal church or not. And those who are spirit-filled will know each other by the Spirit of God. Again, this is what seeking the glory of God is all about. And the Lord says, during this time, every prayer ever prayed for the church will be fulfilled. All the saints who ever desired to see a spotless bride for the Lord of all will see their prayers come to fruition during this time. And so as we um, make disciples of nations, as we host this movement, um, we get a lot of communication from people across the earth mm -hmm. that look to be a part of what we're doing. And so we came across one as we were going through these, then there was a name that popped up that uh, the Lord highlighted to us and, and said we needed to do something with that. We didn't know what to do. We asked the Lord, well, what do we do with this person? And he said, well, give them a test. <laughs> and we looked at each other and thought, test? We have to write a test? And then we asked, well, what would that test look like? And he said, Ask him how he uses the Holy Spirit in his ministry. Oh, okay. So that's what we did. We sent an email back to him and kind of forgot about it. It wasn't too long, and we received a reply, and it was so well written, it blew us both away. We thought, when <laughs> we were going through it, we thought, could we write one this well? It was astonishing how... Um, how well written it was and um, how well this person knew the Holy Spirit. That was the start of our Kenyan ministry. Uh, shortly uh, after uh, reading that and consulting with the Holy Spirit some more, uh, we started and um, David Weba wanted to uh, register our ministry in Nairobi uh, as a ministry in Kenya. And so we had to fund uh, the building of a church in Kenya as well. This, this church that was built then it turned out to be um, quite amazing and um, attracted many members uh, fairly quickly. So the Holy Spirit told us, you know, take David under your authority. And, da and we asked David, what do you desire of us? And he said, I just desire you to mentor me. And we just want to say, how many people desire to come under the authority of someone else? Right. Most people desire to be above others. They're seeking glory for themselves. But when you're seeking the glory of God, you desire mm -hmm. what he desires. And the Holy Spirit was leading him to come underneath our authority. And so that, that's phenomenal. Um, so we sent David materials and um, various things. The Holy Spirit, we said, 
Lord, is he a fivefold minister? What's going on here? Why are you um, co connecting us with him? And Holy Spirit said he's an apostle. We talked to David and we said, um, do you know what position you hold in the fivefold? Because obviously in churches, everyone is called a pastor. If you're mm. a leader, you're called a pastor. Well, right. that's just not true according to the Holy Spirit. So we said, are you, do you know what office you hold? And he said, I'm an apostle. And we said, yes, you're right. And he said, well, how do you know? <laughs> so, well, that's what the Lord told us as well. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit has told us that David is the apostle over Kenya mm -hmm. and that this ministry will grow into all of Africa, the entire continent that David will be over. And so um, it's really our honor to work with him. Um, and so far, this, the, as David explains it, he says the grace of God is on this ministry like he's never seen. And so people come just from all over the, the headquarters that we built. They call it a church, you know. We know the Lord's moving to house churches, but we had to have a headquarters. And so that is in Ludwar, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we went to Kenya in this past January 2024, um, we visited our church in Nairobi. We visited the churches that we have in Ludwar. And of course, then we have some churches out in the middle, middle of the desert. This is all desert, by the way. But the middle, middle of the desert um, in what's called Turkana East, um, there are a few churches there that came together. And so it was rather phenomenal. Um, and so David shared his side of the story. He was, um, he had a very hard life. He didn't like Christians. He didn't like to hear about Jesus. He mm. didn't even want to hear the word church. None of that. And people around him understood that was the case. Well, he had um, an ailment in which his arm, his left arm was swelled, grotesquely swelled, like you can't even believe how big it was. He's a skinny, skinny man, <laughs> and his arm was just huge. And then his left eye was also blind, um, and he was in pain all the time. He said he couldn't sleep unless mm. he got drunk, um, and because it, it was so painful all the time. And he went to the doctor several times to have them cut him open to try to drain fluid out of that arm, but nothing would come out. So he had a young, a young boy that would help him, help bathe him, help do things for him. And one night he had a dream, and in the dream there was blood over the doorpost of his house. And he didn't understand what that meant, um, but then he heard a voice later tell him, you need to go to church. So he went to his neighbor, who he knew was a Christian, and told him, I want to go to church with you. Well, the guy thought, yeah, right, you know, you're pulling my leg. And he said, no, I really, I want to go to church with you. So he went to church with this neighbor, and the preacher talked about the Passover and how there was blood yeah. on the doorpost. And David said, when he finished telling that story, he stopped preaching, and he said, somebody here needs to come forward you know, this is a word for you, whatever. Well, David knew that was him. That was his dream. So he went forward and the guy um, prayed over him or prophesied or something. He fell to the ground and he said, the Lord cut open his hand as he's out in the spirit and like 10 liters of blood and crud came out of that arm, out of that hand. He still has the scar of where the Lord cut him open. And to hmm. the Lord totally healed his arm healed his eye. He looks totally normal. You would never know right. if there had been anything wrong with him. So anyway, so he decided to live for Jesus. Well, <laughs> that was a good choice. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, but he still had a hard, hard, uh, hard way to go. Um, there was a lot of opposition to the gospel, but the grace of God was on him to make disciples. And so somebody, some leader of a church asked him, will you come to my church and help it to grow? Mm. And so he did that. He went to that church and he helped it um, grow. And then that leader became jealous of him. And so he handed everything over to the leader and he left the church. But that wasn't good enough. That leader um, came after him, sent an assassin to shoot him. But the Holy Spirit told him um, what was going on. And so he confronted the assassin. Um, and the guy decided not to shoot him. <laughs> right, he's not. That didn't work out. So then the leader asked um, some of the street kids, the kids that live on the street, to stone David. Mm -hmm. And the kids said, no, we're not going to do that because that guy's really nice to us and he prays for us every day. We hear him praying at like 6 a.m. or something. 
So they refused. Um, and then, um, but it was still like a struggle for David. It was a struggle for his family. He didn't know where the Lord wanted him, but he knew he needed to hear from God what he was supposed to do. So he left his wife and his children, and he went up on a mountain and prayed and fasted for seven months until the Holy Spirit led him to our website, to our videos, and the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit told him, these people are speaking the truth. These are the ones I want you to come under. And so David contacted us, and that's his side of the story. And then yeah. since that time, obviously, um, the ministry has just flourished and grown. He, he went back home, <laughs> and the ministry has flourished and grown. And so come January 2024, that's when we arrived in Kenya um, to, uh, to the great delight of our, uh, just the lovely disciples of Jesus in Kenya. Here we are in Ludwar. Wow. Hello. <laughs> hey, Rod. And uh, that's the plane we just got on. They greeted us at the airport and dressed us in their traditional garb. We got a motorcade. We got a motorcade <laughs> into the city. And um, and then we got to worship the Lord together, and right. it was it was amazing. It was so amazing. That was the beginning of this trip. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we went, uh, the first stop was Nairobi. We made it, but our bags didn't. And so, if you are watching uh, a video, you might notice we wear the same clothes a lot. We actually praised the Lord for it because the 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 extra stuff we kind of represented uh, um, more like luxury there and just having what we had was was enough it was it was by the grace of God enough we each had a couple changes of clothes and it, it was enough it worked so we we arrived in Nairobi and um, we got there quite late and we um, taught the next day at um, uh, the church there and uh, it was, the, we taught there for two days, and it was just a really amazing time. Thank you so much. It's a great honor to be with you. We're so full of joy to be with all of you. Joseph asked me, do you always smile? <laughs> and I said, yes, I'm always happy in Jesus. <laughs> because he's so good to us. <laughs> and we were, there were church leaders and pastors and so on there. Um, and, you know, you would expect some resistance to some of the teachings that we brought, we had none of that. They received what we were saying and searched out to see if it was true. Uh, from from there, uh, we went on to uh, Ludwar, and that's where we had the motorcade. Okay, we're in a motorcade on our way to the church. A line of youth on motorcycles and some vehicles. And there's David in favor and Kirk and Ron and some cars. Stella's in one of these cars. Uh, then there's me. We got to worship at, uh, at the Seek and the Glory of God Ministries uh, Kenya or Ludwar Church that um, David had uh, overseen the building of and it was, it was just amazing. The people were uh, so welcoming and friendly and so we went there for a couple of days, and then the next uh, church was the uh, Lakori uh, uh, East Turkana East Church, and it was a interesting uh, trip there because we went back. It's it seems like a long, long, long ways into the desert, and as we approached, there was all these people in the road, all dressed in their native stuff you know the women had all the jewel the, the necklace thing and they were they were just beautiful but 
we thought, what is going on here? And there was, I don't know, maybe a hundred of them or more. I don't, I don't know. A lot of them. They kind of surrounded both trucks. And we got out and was like, they, they dressed us in the traditional garb and, um, and uh, just really, really honored us. We marched uh, with them maybe a half mile to the church. The church was uh, made of, uh, like a lot of the buildings are there, uh, s sticks and, and grass and, and so on. Um, it was like <sighs> perfect for where it was. Uh, inside on a hundred degree day, it felt comfortable. And so... <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> comfortable according to the desert. It's yes. Still, you're still sweating all the time. Yeah, you are. And <laughs> you never... <laughs> the bottle of water never leaves your, your hand. You always got got to have some water with you. But um, it was really uh, an experience there. Uh, I it, it reminded me of something that I had seen on like National Geographic or something. Um, we danced with these people and we were singing songs. Uh, we are many, we are one, and we praise the the lord together and i i don't know i i it was just so impressive so different from life here in nairobi in um in turkana east and ludwar i think the thing that stands out is faith um that these people received the message that we brought by faith and so we want to let you know that those of you who prayed for us, who've been praying for them, who supported us financially, um, we couldn't go without that support. It's very expensive. Um, yeah. But they needed it. Um, they needed this, this kind of discipleship. They needed this message that we brought. Um, it's, it's the true, full gospel of Jesus Christ. They needed the vision and the prophetic words of where God is taking us where he's taking the world, where he's taking Kenya. Kenya is like the tip of the spear, um, according to the Holy Spirit, that there is going, the Lord says he's even going to bring missionaries out of Kenya into the United States mm -hmm. because his eyes roam to and fro throughout the earth looking for faith. And he found faith in Ludwar, Kenya. He uses the weak to shame the strong and the despised to shame those who are honored. You know, I mean, he, he picked something that seems insignificant and chose it because he found right. faith there. And so everywhere we went, we we're impressed with their faith. Why did they come dancing to us in their traditional garb? And when we say traditional uh, clothing, this is literally what they wear every day. They wear the necklaces like all the way up here. They, mm -hmm. they wear all this. This is normal for them. Mm -hmm. To us, it looks like National Geographic, but it's real. It's real it's life. Real. Yep. And why did they honor us? Why did they come dancing? Because they believe the Lord. They mm -hmm. believed David, Apostle David, when he brought the message that we brought to him. They believe this and they want it. They want to follow Jesus. What we taught them is to listen to Holy Spirit, to follow his voice. We taught them this is where the Lord is bringing the earth. He's bringing you into goodness. Kenya in Africa will experience prosperity. The Lord is going to judge those who have oppressed you. And they believed the message, all of it. And, and, and so this is why they treated us this way, mm -hmm. because they believe God. Yeah. And so we just, um, we're, honestly, that's what floored us the most about the whole trip, mm -hmm. is their it's great, true. their great mm -hmm. faith yeah. um, in Kenya. We were uh, very honored, very blessed to meet them. We told them repeatedly that those who are praying for you are one in spirit with you in the United States. It doesn't matter, you know, which country you're from or what color your skin is or what language you speak. Mm -hmm. When you're of the Holy Spirit, you're one in spirit. And it was an amazing time of building um, the church over in Kenya and, and making disciples and um, helping people to discern the voice of the Lord, to encourage them in their faith. We saw many miracles and healings um, at each church from Turkana East, then we went back to Ludwar and spent right. the rest of our time there. That was a longer conference um, spanning you know, a whole week or whatever. 
um, that a lot of people came to, and there were a lot of healings. Um, and we. I gotta tell one. Go I, ahead, I please. Tell Ron. Oh yeah, go ahead. Ron is uh, goes to our house church, and the Lord told us to bring um, Ron along, and so. Um, he he was praying for a person in uh, in the Ludbor Church, and uh, the interpreter was had a very quiet voice. It was um, Pastor David's wife, or uh, Apostle David's wife, correct? Is that? Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if that matters, but I yeah. don't either. <laughs> but anyway, she was speaking softly to his way of thinking, and and um, so he asked what was wrong with the man, and he. Th thought she said that his eyes hurt, that he had eye pain. And so he began to, to pray for him. And when he finished, he asked whether or not the man was okay. And so he could pray again if, if he wasn't. And she, she talked to the, the man in uh, Swahili. And she looks back at him and she said, yes, he can see now. And Ron was like, what? I, I thought I was praying for eye pain. No, he couldn't see. And so, so he says, oh, okay, well, um, the, the man could see, but it wasn't extremely well. Uh, it wasn't clear. So he said, well, I'll pray again for sight. And he did, and the man's sight came fully, and uh, he could see uh, well. <laughs> but what we kind of we had this a number of times on this trip too where where we would make mistakes and god would correct them for us before we knew we had made a mistake uh it, it was uh it definitely um, we went there in power uh, yes it, we brought the word of the lord for sure but the, with demonstration of power mm -hmm. So there were so many healings and so many things that happened. That was just one that was kind of uh, humorous. So. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice when you heal someone and you don't know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pray for one thing and something else gets healed. Yes. Yeah, it's a good deal. <laughs> so yeah. Tiffany said that, um, you know, the Lord had told us that we would be receiving ministry, uh, uh, missionaries from Kenya to the United States. Um, he also said that eventually they would support us, which <laughs> it seems unlikely right now, but we can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do. The move is going to be so great that it's beyond our imagination how it's going to exactly go. And, and we can't tell you how excited we are to see him do this work in Kenya. Right. And remember, what he's doing in Kenya, he's doing in all the nations of the world. He is. So, like we told them, you are raised up to take over. Take over the mountains of influence in the world. Yeah. Um, and, and the Lord gave us a cup, several of us visions mm -hmm. while we were there of them doing that. Yes. Um, flipping the governments of the nations in Africa um, and bringing righteousness, establishing righteousness. The Lord said that there were things hidden, um, resources hidden that he had hidden in Africa so mm -hmm. that those who are exploiting them wouldn't have found it yet, that he will um, bring to their attention. And so we just want you to know that in your nation too, he's, the Lord is raising you up uh, to take over, to bring the kingdom of heaven into all the areas of influence in the world. So be ready to go to work with the Lord and mm -hmm. in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in your authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now well, we hope you enjoy watching uh, the video footage and um, looking at the picture clips. Um, we were very blessed to go. We thank you again for partnering with us. Um, uh, we know that God's doing amazing things in Kenya, in Africa, and in all the nations of the world. The great reset of the Lord is happening. and. Um, we just appreciate being a part of it.
This is the pool area. Kitty pool up to three feet. Deep pool. Asante. Asi kwa wakati huu. And this opportunity. Sitaku potesha wakati. Don't wanna waste time. Na, ninaisikia tu.